We'll begin our study of statistics by introducing a few terms that we're going to need. The first is the word variable. So in statistics, a variable is just any characteristic recorded about an individual. Um, now this can be broken down into two main categories or types of variables. The first is a categorical variable. And a categorical variable is just a variable that names categories. So some examples might be, for instance, um, eye color or gender or hair color or favorite flavor of ice cream. All right, so et cetera. Those are just different types of categorical variables. And categorical variables just name categories. So the values of the variables within each category won't be numbers, they'll actually be titles. So um, the, the types of values you could get for eye color might be blue or green for gender, male, female, um, hair color, brown, blonde, et cetera. So those are the values of those categorical variables. On the other hand, quantitative variables are variables in which the numbers act as numerical values, and they always have units. So, for example, a quantitative variable could be number of males or females in a class. It could be shoe size, it could be height, it could be your SAT score, okay? These are all examples of quantitative variables. So one way to sort this out is that quantitative variables always have units, right? Um, and the other thing is that I mean, the way I like to think of it is you can take a meaning, you can take an average of a quantitative variable and have it be a meaningful answer, right? You, you can't take the average of someone's gender or the average of someone's eye color, but you can take the average of a, um, you know, a, a group of students' SAT scores or the student's height. So that's an, another way of thinking of quantitative variables. Now, quantitative variables can be broken down into two types, which we won't get bogged down on now, but just to, to lay some groundwork. There's what are called discrete quantitative variables, which are basically variables in which you can count um, discreetly the, uh, the values, and then continuous quantitative variables. Okay, and like, like something like height would probably be continuous because height really varies pretty continuously if you have the proper measurement tools, whereas something like um, SAT score is, is discrete because you can't get a, a SAT score of um, in math of like 700.5. It's either 700 or 701. But in any case, these are the two types of variables we're going to study in this course. So the first thing we do with categorical data and all types of data is we want to sort of organize it after we gather it. So here's an example we're going to analyze throughout the next few uh, examples. So this says that one way to put all the people on the Titanic into groups is by ticket class, counting how many had each kind of ticket. And we can organize the data into two different types of tables, a frequency table and a relative frequency table. So a frequency table is here on the left, and you'll notice that all a frequency table is, is um, you can think of it as being your categorical variable, which is class. It has all the values of that variable, first, second, third, and the crew, and then another column with the counts, which are basically, um, I think of them as like piles that we're, uh, we're sort of sorting the people on the Titanic into. All right, so one of the things I did ahead of time, which I encourage you to check, is I just to I totaled up all of, the, uh, all of the people on the Titanic. So if you add up these numbers in this column, you get 2,201. All right, and so there's your frequency table. Now you can, 
make another type of frequency table, which something that's called a relative frequency table, in which you're thinking of the 2,201 people on the Titanic as 100%. And then we start to convert these numbers into uh, ratios and then percents. That way it gives us a good sense of the proportion of people within each class. So if you have your calculator, you can check this. But the calculation you would do is you would take your 325, for instance, 325 people out of the 2,201. That will give you your percent as uh, a decimal. And of course, you times by 100. All right, so if you do that, you get about 14.8 percent. Similarly, you'll do that with second class. You're going to do 285 divided by 2,201 times 100, and you get 12.9 percent. For third class, same calculation. With a 706, you get 32.1 percent. And for the crew, you get 40.2 percent. Now I rounded to tenths and I ensured that when you add up all these values you get 100%. Sometimes with a little bit of rounding errors you can get more than that, but um, you, might just, you might have to then on occasion fudge it so that that works out. But generally speaking, if you are consistent with your rounding, that's what you'll end up with. So we've got our two types of tables, a frequency table and a relative frequency table. You'll notice that a relative frequency table allows us to sort of get a sense of size, right? Um, because percents are a familiar, uh, a familiar way of us for us to think about uh, quantity. Um, the problem with these tables is that they don't give us a nice visual representation of the data, and so what we often do next is we take this these tables and convert them into pictures, which we'll see in the next slide.